Okay, we got a 1999 or a 2000 Gulfstream. You can see the miles, 36,091. Uh, be pretty sure those are original. Actually, yes, it would be because it would go this way, wouldn't it? So 36,091. I'll show you here. It's a Ford V10, Triton V10. Starts right up. Needs a little gas in it. Engine's real good and strong in it. We'll put it in reverse. I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but we are moving. We're moving back and forth. No problems there. We know the headlights work. I think there's a one of the um, turn signals. There might be an issue there. But okay, so that has got us here. Uh, I couldn't get this to come on, the AC. So I'm assuming that there is uh, a fuse somewhere. Just be aware of that. Okay, you can see there a Triton V10. Don't see any leaks anywhere. Everything seems to work okay. Of course, all the engines under that hump there in the in the passenger compartment. Uh, there's a few stray wires. Not really sure. Looks like an Ethernet cable there. Everything appears to be here. There's not a leak anywhere in any of this stuff. And we haven't taken it out and driving it, driven it, and I'll show you why. on the roof there is a tarp with some bricks holding the tarp down and that's the reason we're not going to take it out and drive it but we drove it in here just a couple of months ago uh, about a 20 mile trip and it runs and drives just fine so I'm not sure we didn't bring the tape measure I think this one's 34 feet anyways it's between 32 and 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 40 somewhere in that area Gulfstream. You can see the bricks up there on it. Here's this side, and it's still running. You can hear it running there. Not really sure what condition the tires are in. Let's just assume that they're shot. Okay, more than likely, um, yeah, they're 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 old and dry rotted. So yeah, if you were gonna travel with it, you would definitely need to get. Here's the exhaust. If you were going to travel with it, you definitely need to do something like that. More than likely, someone would buy this, fix it up, uh, turn it into a tiny house. That's what I would do with it for sure. But this is a Class A. Oh, the headlights are on there. That's pretty cool. Uh, looks like some other auxiliary lights up on top. Not really sure about that. Um, the lady that I'm selling it for here, she bought it to possibly fix up and live in. But she's got a really nice house. Don't know why she would want <laughs> to live in this thing, but uh, stranger things have happened. Now, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Possibly... Um, yeah, someone's obviously moved, put something over this that doesn't belong here. So, don't know what that is. And here in a second, we'll open these bays and we'll show the, the storage. All right. So, we're going the door here. Now, the floor has been uh, replaced recently. You can see here. Uh, looks like OSB. I'm not really sure why he didn't replace it with something like Advantech. Can't really tell how to good how good of a job he did, but anyways, the floor is pretty solid in here. Big huge panoramic view for the for driving, I guess. Let me get up here. So there's the V10. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. So I need this key to unlock the bet the bottoms. Here's the interior. Let me see if I can get 
back a little bit. Give me just a second. Well, I thought I had the ability to do wide screen video recording, but uh, apparently I don't. Okay, so there's definitely been some water damage. I think it got this area as well. There was a guy that came to work on it, took uh, everything apart. Everything is still here. So there's the stove, the microwave, the vent hood. Here's a mattress. Uh, I, this must have been something that he bought to replace maybe these walls with. I'm not really sure. Uh, there's all the frames. Everything is still here. There's a little high to bed couch. We'll go down here. And of course the ceiling, I'm six feet tall and I can actually reach up and touch the ceiling above my head. It's probably the ceiling's at least a foot above my head. So it's about a seven foot ceiling or so. <clears throat> kind of get an idea of what's here. This floor that I'm standing on here is really nice and solid. Everything that's in here uh, goes with it. There's a table bottom, there's a mattress. It's actually got a really nice mattress. Uh, okay, the microwave went up in that spot. Here's the refrigerator. The door for the refrigerator is right there. Not really sure why it was taken off, but uh, it was. <laughs> okay. Here's the bedroom area. We had a little bit of water get in through here. So just assume that there's water damage everywhere. The price is going to reflect that. Some of this paneling, I guess this was going to be replaced. I'm not really sure. But you can see here, when they moved the van, when they moved the, the RV, it hit this um, skylight and ripped it off. And when it did, that's when the water problem started. The old guy that owned it didn't realize he was underneath the tree that close. And then when he moved it, it tore that one off. That one's still there, but it's broken. So it's going to need a couple of those things. All these cabinet doors are still here. Uh, there's the fuse panel. Get an idea of what that looks like. All the wires that go down through there. Um, as you can tell by my terminology, I don't know anything about these. RVs, I was just asked to help sell it. Here's the bathroom area. Uh, the toilet goes right here. Sorry. The toilet goes right there. And there's actually a room there to have a regular size toilet, but it's got this one like this. The sink frame has seen its better days, but it's still there. And it's actually got a pretty good size stand-up shower. Uh, it looks like it's about a 40, well, we got a 42 inch at our house and it looks like it's about the same size. Up here is, you know, more uh, damage. This is where it hit the tree as well. So there's, there's some work to be done here. Someone that knows how to fix stuff like this um, and work on it and uh, maybe get a good price for you know, a place to live. And we'll step in here with this bed stuff set. I guess that's one of the water tanks. I'm not gonna step there. But you can see all the way through. Yeah, I'm gonna say this one's probably 32 or 34 feet. Um, I'll have the title, so we'll be able to look on the title. Uh, it should be a, a number on the VIN that tells what size it is. Let's see here. Yeah. Now, as far as we know, everything works. Everything was supposed to work. And then the guy got in the remodel phase and just kind of ran out of, <laughs> ran out of energy. Or I'm not really sure what it was. But there you go. And I'll take these keys out and we'll go look at the storage compartments. Tell you what, we'll, re we'll reach over here and start it up again.
Yeah, that's got to be worth something, right? Okay, we'll do the uh, the storage compartments next. Okay, so here's the generator door. Can't seem to get it open. Maybe it opened from the inside. I don't know. But there, there's the generator. Can't really tell much about it. If it starts from the inside, we don't know where to start it from. We're not going to go push a bunch of buttons trying to find out. Here's the automatic jacks. You can see them sticking in on both sides. The gas tank's probably 100 gallon. It's a big, giant gas tank. You can see the back of the other tires over there. A little bit of rust here underneath this compartment. So this stuff is here. There's a hot water heater, looks like. We can't get that one open. May need a little bit of a WD or something other in it. Here's this compartment. It goes all the way through the other side. More pieces and parts of the stuff that goes in the interior. Looks like the 12-volt lights are all laying right here. But everything's there. So right now, it looks like the 12-volt stuff is not working. Doesn't surprise me. Two interstate batteries right there i guess for the generator to run and to put charge into i have no idea if they work or not i guess i can put a volt meter on and test them front tire it's got pretty good tread on it We just consider the tires uh, needing to be replaced. We we'll just assume that. We got all the doors open on this side, or the storage compartments and such. And I'll show you what they are. Looks like the. Uh, well, I see a bunch of solenoids. Maybe somebody else knows what all this stuff is. There's an air pressure, air line. The other side of that compartment, you can see. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right here. You can see all the way through, there's a the propane. Some more parts. We're getting down to this one. PB blaster, that's maybe what we need to put on that door over there. Uh, I think the refrigerator, yeah, matter of fact, the refrigerator goes right here, so I'm not sure what this is covering up. Somebody probably knows. Here's the black water stuff. Water hookups and such. And then here's the cables that you can plug it in in the campsite. All that stuff's here. As far as we know, the entire thing is complete. It's just in pieces complete somewhere. <laughs> the pieces are here with it. Palm breeze. Yep, I guess you put your fresh water here. We don't. Okay. All right. And I can't get up on top of it. There's not a ladder included with it. But it does have about a $200 tarp up there. That'll go with it as well. But if you come and get it, you'll have to take the tarp off, obviously. Unroll it. Um, drive it home or drive it wherever you're going to take it at. Put the tarp back on it or put it under a shed. But there's absolutely holes in the top of it where that vent was. So just be prepared. Yeah, it's hard to get this thing. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna step in here and start it one more time. 
You guys got the keys to it? She does. Okay. Well, tell her I'm going to start it and move it forward or move it backward, I guess, right? The dog doesn't come with it. <laughs> but there's the, um, the tow hitch. It should be able to tow, I think it's at least 10,000 pounds with this one. And this car. There's the gas the filler nozzle. And definitely gonna need some gas in it pretty soon. There's a spare tire in there, you saw that a minute ago. Let me go in here and start it. Start it one more time. Move it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna move it back. I'm gonna go in reverse. Okay. Starts right up. Love that. Now the brakes, it stops, but there's a lot of play in the pedal. One more time. Right there, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, there we go. So low fuel brake is on. I think the parking brake looks like it's off. Maybe it's got a leaking cylinder. Who knows? ABS light is on. So just assume we're going to work on it, okay? Alright, that's all for now.